Welcome to Cooking with Crusha. I have brought my good friend Jim Klein in to help me make chicken tikka masala. The kids love it so much, they asked me to make it, so I thought I would call Jim and say, hey, let's make some chicken. I'll be your sous chef, let's All have right, fun. All right, let's go. Let's start with some oil in the pan. Jim, if you wanna grab the chicken out of the fridge. We are going to start with about, I think there's six or eight breasts here. So I'm going to let Jim have the opportunity here to put it up for me, if you don't mind. Sure. All right. Do you want gloves or no gloves. are you good? I'll wash right. afterwards. <laughs> so we just want nice, like one inch chunks. One inch cubes. Okay. Yep. All eight breasts. All the way through. Got it. And while you're doing that, I am going to take two onions and slice the onions up here. So now why do, do Mike and the kids prefer this as a meal? I'm really shocked because I have a 10 year old and a 12 year old. Mm -hmm. So normally it's chicken nuggets, french fries, spaghetti is the typical kids food. So we can save the nuggets for the next, next we episode. We can save that okay. for the next one. Right. But the kids, they, they're so well cultured that we travel a lot. Mm -hmm. My daughter loves escargot. Mm. It's one of her favorites. Okay. But she won't eat mustard or ketchup or anything like that on her burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me grab a knife. Yeah, nice sharp knives. Thank you for that. And don't judge me on my knife skills because I'm sure that I'm probably not doing it right. Remember, this is a home cooking show. I am definitely not your, your chef. Sh chef du cuisine. You are doing a great job. Now with the chicken tikka masala, we just need rough cuts of the onion and then we have the jalapeno because at the end we're going to blend it all together so it doesn't matter if everything is exactly an inch or a quarter inch or what have you. Yeah, when you say rough chop that's what I like. Rough chop makes it so much easier. So how often have you had Indian food? Not often so like when you started to talk about the menu I was actually kind of excited because this is not something that I eat often. When my sister uh, first moved to Towson, Maryland, there was a place very close to her apartment. So whenever I would visit as I traveled, it was something that we would have. But ever since, you know, I've gone to one or two of the local restaurants. Uh, a buddy of mine likes to go to the, one of the restaurants for the, uh, the lunch buffet. Okay. So, um, I actually don't think they're doing that anymore. But anyway, um, good food. You know, it's always, it was always a good time. It's just not something that I have very often. So, I was excited to learn preparation and, and you know, how this is going to come out. Okay. Well, let's hopefully this turns out. So, we're just going to take this and we're going to just do some rough cuts here. And like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. And you're tough. I normally soak my onions in ice water. <laughs> you're like just blasting right through it. Like it's not like I'd be weeping. <laughs> well, the red onions tend to be a little stronger than the yellow onions. So that's why I decided since we're going to be on camera, I'm not going to try the red onions and stand here and cry with you. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely be crying. All right, let's get this out of the way here. So now, how often do you make a dish like this? Like, is this a, a weekend dish? Is this a, you're gonna have this ready when when uh, Mike the mogul comes home from work, <laughs> or, or where like this is a, a, a standard weeknight preparation? Normally, we do a lot of uh, curries as a comfort food, like in the winter when it's cold. Okay. So 
luckily today is a nice rainy day mm -hmm. and my daughter said please can you make some curry and being that she's such a picky eater if she asks me to make something it doesn't matter if it's rainy or 80 degrees out i'm gonna make it for her got it all right look at you mm -hmm. all right we're gonna go ahead and get our olive oil going in the pan here turn that up extra virgin olive oil all over the bottom of the pan. Let's see that's getting nice and warm. Pass that to you there, John. Yes, ma'am. And while our oil heats up, as you see here, we have a whole bunch of different spices. Jim, can you recognize any of those spices? Uh, you know, I recognize the tomato paste in the in the middle. Okay. But what did you do with the rest of your tomato paste? This is a, a interesting story. Everybody gets a little can of tomato paste, mm -hmm. and it calls for a quarter teaspoon or something. So what do you do with the rest of it? Throw it away. No, sir. Hmm. You put it in a baggie, roll it out, put it in the freezer, and then as you need it, you break it off. So you can see that well mine's starting to melt here, but it was all into little frozen pieces. Yeah, that's a so great idea. That is all I need there. So now we're not wasting, especially with the price of food nowadays, we don't want to waste anything. But we have garlic, jalapeno, ginger, smell this fresh ginger. Mm, oh my goodness, yeah, that's that's wonderful. And then we have some garam masala and chili powder curry, turmeric, and turmeric is really good. Not only is it a good spice in Indian food, it's good for your body. Good. As you know, there's a lot of diet fads going around. Turmeric is one of those that helps with inflammation, cancer. Hmm. Uh, it absorbs fat, fatty oils. Hmm. So it helps you to lose weight. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> Hagerstown Ford continues to be your leader in car sales up and down the I-81 corridor. We will beat any and all competitors' prices, and we've made buying a new car easier than ever with one-day delivery better than Amazon and a return policy better than Walmart. Your satisfaction is our guarantee. If you don't like it, simply return it and we'll come pick it up, no questions asked. Why would you shop anywhere else? At Hagerstown Ford, we take great pride in our community and supporting our local student athletes. That's why Hagerstown Ford is the official car dealership of Shepherd Rams quarterback Tyson Bajant. Our remote buying process has made new car shopping so easy, you'll never even set foot in a dealership. Simply go to HagerstownFord.com and click on the car you want to buy it, or use the Axle Auto app. It's that easy. You can order your new car on any device. Go to HagerstownFord.com and get your new car signed, sealed, and delivered from Hagerstown Ford. A reputation for caring, a legacy of service. At Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, it's been our story since 1880. A family-owned business with three locations, we are closely connected to the communities we serve, and we're here for our neighbors in their times of loss. We support the needs and wishes of families, and we create services that reflect the life and the character of the departed. We offer traditional services and burial, as well as many options for cremation, customized remembrances, and memorial services. Pre-planning your arrangements ensures your wishes are carried out while removing the burden of responsibility from family members. We recognize and support the work of local hospice and veterans organizations for the roles they play in our community. Serving the entire Eastern Panhandle and Tri-State area, Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations retains its family atmosphere and stays true to its roots. Contact us for advanced planning or at your time of loss. We're here when you need us. Okay, Jim, let's see. I'm going to let you do the honors of putting the onions into the olive oil there. Very good. And this was two onions, right? Two That's medium? Two. Yes. Very good. Okay. Now you can use more onion or less onion. Okay. So Let's that is her. completely up to you. Okay. And then we're going to let that cook until it gets 
soft or translucent. Okay. Heat up there. And then with the spices that you used, what were the, and I, I know, I believe you said that we're gonna give the, our, our viewers the recipe. Yes. But what, what were the amounts in, the, in the, the little cups of the spices that you have? So we have, and I normally don't measure when I cook. Oh, okay. So it's like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, taste mm -hmm. it. Sometimes you might need a little bit more. But uh, roughly, I would say that your garlic here is about a nice heaping tablespoon. And then your jalapenos, you don't have to add these. Okay. So I don't want anybody to say, oh, well, I can't make tikka masala because I don't like jalapenos. Oh, uh, good okay, okay, so eliminate the jalapenos and you don't have to worry about the heat. Could, could we go the other way? Instead of jalapenos, could we add something hotter? Like oh, absolutely. You could do ghost peppers or habanero. habaneros, okay. any. It's completely up to you as far as your palate and, and what you can handle heat-wise. Good advice. Okay. And then remember that as the peppers cook, and if they have seeds, the hotter it gets. Okay. So you don't want... And it awaits fire. Yeah, so if you're using fresh jalapenos from your garden, you don't want to just chop them up and throw them in if you, don't, if you can't handle a lot of heat. Right. You want to scrape the seeds out because that's where all your heat comes from. Uh, we have about two tablespoons of brown sugar, about two tablespoons of the tomato paste, uh, two teaspoons of turmeric, and then roughly about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of your um, cumin, or I'm sorry, not cumin, but your uh, turmeric and chili powder, and then garam masala, I have about two tablespoons. Oh, okay. And then... Ginger, I like the taste of ginger. My mm -hmm. family likes the taste of ginger, so I do a little bit more than what a lot of recipes call for, and I think this is about a tablespoon and a half, but you can put less ginger or, again, no ginger at all with this. Okay, that looks like it's about ready to add in. We're gonna add in our jalapenos, our ginger, Mm. Can you smell that already? I know. And I was we actually, need smell vision is what we need. Right. <laughs> and ginger. I was actually thinking about that earlier. You can walk, you walk into some houses and you smell the glade or the air wick or whatever. Right. I walk into your house and immediately what I get is these fresh <laughs> herbs these, these, and spices. Yeah, absolutely. And, I tell you. And then wait till summertime when I have the garden going and I have my basil in here and my fresh rosemary. I have a basil plant growing on my kitchen counter. Nice. Basil and cilantro. Very nice. Cilantro is something I can't grow. I don't know why. Oh, I smell that. Mm. Okay, let's add in our turmeric. As you see, that's a bright orange color. That's what gives your Indian food that orange color. And whenever I make rice, I replace the water with chicken uh, stock. Oh, okay, absorbs the flavor, okay. Absolutely, and it's good for you. And then I add a little bit of turmeric, and then we have yellow rice with the good properties of all the health benefits that turmeric oh, has. Oh, very good. So instead of a fried rice, your yellow rice is actually fortified. That's Absolutely. outstanding. Good idea. Okay. And yeah. you know I'm stealing the suggestion about the tomato paste because I'm that guy <laughs> right? who throws away the three-quarter filled pan. Exactly. Can. That's your garlic uh, masala. And then a little bit of curry. I, you know, the, the 2D people who are watching this on the screen are really missing out because... <laughs> because of the smell, yeah, it's amazing. Right. Cooking this, like, uh, right after lunch doesn't matter. I'm still <laughs> hungry. And chili powder. And while you incorporate that, I am going to grab what I was talking about with the tomato paste. So you just put it in a baggie, you roll it out so it's nice and flat, mm -hmm. and then as you need it, you see it just breaks right off of however much you need. That is outstanding. It looks like you scored no it. Yeah, no waste. No waste. Well, in these times, you know, every penny helps, so that's a good, good, very good suggestion. Oh, that smells fantastic. Oh, 
right, let's add in our brown sugar. And pour tomato paste. Now the brown sugar in the the reason behind that is to cut down on the acid from the tomatoes and the uh, tomato paste. So you always need something to cut the acid down. Caramelizing very quickly. It's I mean this is just very rich. Smells delicious, and it just, I mean, what is the Japanese said first, that I think that you eat with your eyes first. This Absolutely. just has a, a wonderful texture. The smell is fabulous. And now we're gonna turn our heat down to medium, and we're gonna add, this is two cans. Each can is about uh, 700 uh, grams each. So that's diced tomatoes and crushed tomatoes. Very good. And again, if all you have is crushed tomatoes, use the crush because everything is going to get blended at the end of the. You know, most of the time I'm doing sports. Today I'm <laughs> a master <laughs> stirrer. Oh, that's your new title, master yes, stirrer. Yes, it's man of many hats. Master of none. There we go. Just the rich, deep colors. I mean, you're right. This just looks like comfort food. Absolutely. So now how do you know when this is at not the done point, but in the point when you're ready for next steps? We are about there, actually. Okay, so is it... So basically you're just incorporating all of the spices, the caramelized onions, uh, the tomato paste. You're just actually mixing all that and warming the tomatoes. Oh, okay. All so right, so there's not a degree of doneness that we're... Not yet, no. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer that carefully. Very good. <laughs> into this bowl without us yes. wearing it. Yes, I will wear it, definitely. Okay, stand back. Stand back. Medic. Should I call for the medic? Yes. And the nice thing about this is we're not going to wash this pan. We're going to reuse the pan as is. My buddy, oh no, a buddy of mine. Just wipe the side yep. here. <laughs> buddy of mine, Michael Simon, always says, oh, there's there's flavor in the brown. Absolutely. If you want to grab that bottle of olive oil right there. Olive oil, yes, ma'am. And just a little bit to, there we go. She lets me handle the olive oil. Mm -hmm. I do. And then I'm going to let you put the chicken in there. What are we stirring with? Anything out of that, there we go, that works. I'm going to bring that back up to about medium high. All right, and just toss that cutting board right in the sink. We'll leave the dishes for the mogul. Absolutely, he'll love us. He won't allow us in the kitchen together anymore. <laughs> Maybe add just a tiny bit more oil in there, John. Yep, you got it. My oil skills are lacking. There we go. She Here might not let chicken. me do the oil again. Now with the chicken, we want it to be a nice, moist, especially with us using breasts. Breasts dry out so fast that what we're going to do is we just want each side to get about like this before we add the tomatoes back in. So you're adding just a little bit of sear to exactly. the raw breast. And then I don't want to spoil the ending, but <clears throat> we're going to reincorporate the sauce later to finish the chicken? Correct. Very good, okay. So I'm gonna let you watch that while I grab the food processor. It's like watching a scary movie, only I just applied the cliffhanger. Crush is definitely a master uh, home chef, and it, what's funny is, is at the TV 10, the uh, Christmas event last year, people requested <laughs> different things, and I'm thinking about putting in a... Is April too soon to be requesting uh, Indian food for next Christmas? Not at all. So 
So our gem is uh, filling out with the chicken. We are going to add the tomatoes to the food processor. I'm trying not to make too much of a mess here. Now what color was the base of this before you made this dish? <laughs> it was white. Until I use a lot of curry, a lot of spices. I used to try to soak it in bleach to get the white back. And I'm like, you know what? There's no point. And then I lost the lid to the top of my food processor. So we're just going to cover it. And we want it a little bit chunky, not to the point where it's liquefied. Just a nice little chunk. Good view of that. What we have here. Get this out of the way. How's your chicken coming there, Jim? I, I am. I am trying to get it evenly cooked on all sides without over touching. looking lovely. Yeah, I think so. And I think that having the right cooking vessel is very important. And in, in this, it, we're not too crowded. We're able to move things around. Absolutely. Yeah, you certainly don't want to use a small pan to where your chicken is piled up. You want to be able to evenly spread it out in the pan. Get yeah. a nice good cook. I love the high sides too. This is a real nice skillet. Half line. And don't be worried if you don't get every area of your chicken with that uh, sear. Okay. Because it's, it's all going to cook together. You're going to finish it. I don't like my chicken medium rare. No. We don't want to die today. <laughs> First cooking show we die because of raw chicken. That's not going to help ratings. <laughs> And you can still see how you're picking up some of the bits from inside, from the previous cook. And I just think that that's enhancing yes. the flavor the whole way. And trust me, once we add the sauce and we turn it down to a low, we're going to cover it with a lid. And the chicken, I promise you, yeah. will be cooked. Very tender. All the way through. And it will not be tough. It'll be mm -hmm. nice and moist and yep. perfect. I love that you say moist a lot because that's how I expect my chicken. Absolutely. Now some of our friends would think otherwise. Right. <laughs> now once you cover this, once you you pour your your red sauce, mm -hmm. how long then does it take to finish the actual product? Depending on how thick your breasts are, these were pretty big breasts to begin with, so I would say normally it's about thirty minutes, but just keep an eye on it. Okay. You know, break, take a little knife, cut it open, you know, if it's not pink in the middle, because we certainly don't want pink chicken, then we know it's finished and mm -hmm. ready to go. Yeah. I'm not seeing too many... But you start, you don't want to overcook chicken by any means, or you're going to have a rubber... Right. Rubber dish. And could you use thighs or, uh, you know... You can. Uh, Jimmy and Mike, they both prefer thighs. It's hard to sometimes find, especially with finding chicken now, to find thighs that are boneless hmm. and skinless. Yeah, so and then if you buy them with the bone and the skin, it, it's difficult to sit and you know, debone them. Yeah, that's not a weeknight meal. That's going to no. be... That turns like a 30, 45 minute meal into about an hour and a half, two hour. Oh yeah, a lot of labor. Absolutely. I think we're about ready to add the sauce. There we go. Stir that up and we'll turn it down to low. Get this out of the way. And then what do you normally serve this with? I normally serve it with the rice. Okay. And then a we're gonna do a cucumber 
uh, sauce, like a tzatziki sauce. Mm. And non bread. Look at that already. Oh, it looks amazing. Ready to eat already. It looks amazing. And now this is uh, the type of dish that I like to make because you can cover it. And just leave it. Leave it. The stove's going to do the Absolutely. work for you, so you have plenty of other time to prep. And then, of course, because of my OCD, I like to wash dishes as I go, so when you exactly. have a covered dish, yes. it's easy to keep moving. And just make sure that you remember to turn it on low. Okay. Because if you forget, right. you're going to have a burnt mess. Right. Hagerstown Ford continues to be your leader in car sales up and down the I-81 corridor. We will beat any and all competitors' prices. And we've made buying a new car easier than ever with one-day delivery better than Amazon and a return policy better than Walmart. Your satisfaction is our guarantee. If you don't like it, simply return it and we'll come pick it up. No questions asked. Why would you shop anywhere else? At Hagerstown Ford, we take great pride in our community and supporting our local student athletes. That's why Hagerstown Ford is the official car dealership of Shepherd Rams quarterback Tyson Bagent. Our remote buying process has made new car shopping so easy, you'll never even set foot in a dealership. Simply go to HagerstownFord.com and click on the car you want to buy it, or use the Axle Auto app. It's that easy. You can order your new car on any device. Go to HagerstownFord.com and get your new car signed, sealed, and delivered from Hagerstown Ford. A reputation for caring, a legacy of service. At Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, it's been our story since 1880. A family-owned business with three locations, we are closely connected to the communities we serve, and we're here for our neighbors in their times of loss. We support the needs and wishes of families, and we create services that reflect the life and the character of the departed. We offer traditional services and burial, as well as many options for cremation, customized remembrances, and memorial services. Pre-planning your arrangements ensures your wishes are carried out while removing the burden of responsibility from family members. We recognize and support the work of local hospice and veterans organizations for the roles they play in our community. Serving the entire Eastern Panhandle and Tri-State area, Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations retains its family atmosphere and stays true to its roots. Contact us for advanced planning or at your time of loss. We're here when you need us. Hey guys, welcome back. We are now going to make tzatziki sauce to go with our curry. First, you will need a quarter cup of sour cream and a quarter cup of plain yogurt mixed together. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these cucumbers and we're going to cut them up. Oh, so the cucumbers actually go into your sauce. It does, and that's okay. what makes the best flavor. You just want little small slices here. Cucumber. So that's also adding some texture. Exactly. Good. So you see how I have another. And if you want to grab me an onion. Okay. Just a small onion for this amount, please. Again, rough chop. Nothing has to be exactly perfect. We're not showing this right. in a five-star restaurant. This is home cooking. Now, if you want to eventually get better and present things, mm -hmm. and or if it's a Christmas meal that you're working at, we could get Chef Weiss there at Blue Ridge Community and Technical College. He to can teach come us teach some, us a yeah, thing or two. Some, I need some nice skills. So we're gonna add that in there, and then we're gonna use probably about half an onion. Let me just put this to the side. Get that off. And yeah, that's my favorite thing about watching, looking at shows like this, is all of the different tips and tricks that you can pick up, like that tomato paste, definitely going to use that in the future. Absolutely. You know, I have a home garden, I like to do hot peppers, so I'm yes. king of freezing, you know, my jalapenos and habaneros for in the winter. So. 
anything like that that you can do to save even a couple cents along the way. Now do you do uh, stuffed jalapenos? You know, I've done things like that before. Um, I'm definitely a spice person. So like I like to steam shrimp and throw habaneros with lemon in the bottom. Oh, that it sounds is, delicious. It is absolutely fantastic. And if you get that lid on nice and tight, you would not believe how the spice of the habanero leaks into the shrimp. Mm. It is fantastic. And you sprinkle a little old bay after it's done. Just fabulous. Alright, now we're gonna do. We'll put it up. Probably about a quarter of that. We really didn't need all of that. So I'll just save that for later. For something else. And then we are going to add dill. And that's about a teaspoon or so. And then a teaspoon of cumin. And then fresh garlic. It's about a teaspoon and a half. And then some lemon or lime juice. Hmm. Which do you prefer? I like lime. Okay, I would say that I prefer lime too. Just, it's a better uh, acidity, I think. I mean, it's all acidity, but let me find a spoon here. I'm gonna mix all this up. My good, and it looks like a dip that you could eat with anything. Like, where's the Utz potato chips? Oh, I absolutely. A, I just need some, uh, some, some ridges to let that dip into. My goodness, that looks good. My mother-in-law likes it on her steak. Oh, wow. Yeah, I could see that. Or even with the sour cream. You oh, right. Baked potato. Baked potato, yeah. Bacon. There you go. On top of that. Yes. And then if you want to grab the salt and pepper there. And then that's all to taste, so... Now, technically, we should be using white pepper because it's a white sauce. Well, that makes sense. But, again, this is a home cooking show, so... It still blends tastes in. the same. Yeah, it blends in. You know, that, it, it doesn't look bad, but that does make sense. But I normally... This is white sea salt. I normally use the pink uh, Himalayan. Hmm. Alright, now I'm going to get you a spoon to... Taste this and see. Now you have to remember that this needs to go in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes to get all the flavors to incorporate. That makes sense. But this is just a rough and see what you think. So need more salt or lemon. So that's not going to work. Can we just sit that over by my jacket? <laughs> you just want to take this with you? I might just, well, I don't want to waste it. That's fabulous. Oh, oh we can't goodness. waste it. It's good the way it is. Absolutely very good. Perfect. So we're going to put this in the fridge. Give that to you to put in the fridge to get nice and chilled and the flavors incorporated. Okay, Jim, let's see how this chicken is coming about. Oh my goodness, that looks fabulous. That look? Well, Mike and the kids are gonna eat well tonight. Right? Let's see here. Give it a quick stir. And then what you do is you just wanna cut into a piece of the chicken there and take a look. And as you can see, well, let's see here. You can see that it's not pink anymore. So it's just about ready. I would give it probably about another five minutes or so. And then we'll check it again. We'll check one of the bigger pieces to make sure that it's every piece is cooked properly. Like this piece here. Let's see what this one looks like. And if it cuts easily with your yeah, spoon, I this? would think. It's just about to the point where it's ready. There we go. See that? And it's not dry. No, very nice. So we will finish this for about another, I'd say about five minutes. And then we're going to serve it with rice and non bread. Uh, you can purchase non bread at the store in a package over in the deli section. Very good. 
uh, or you can try to make it and that's another show. That's awesome. Well, thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Hope you come back and we'll make an ombre together. You got it. Have a great dinner. Thanks. Bye, Jim. Bye. Thanks for joining us.